Well, welcome back to the headquarters of Linty Fresh. I hope you enjoyed the last tour. And actually, I'm really surprised that so many of you had good comments and nice things to say and emails and, and posts on forums and stuff. I mean, I was just being stupid. And now I feel this pressure to, like, equal the retardation level. Otherwise, you know, it won't be as enjoyable. And that's, that's a lot of pressure. But you know how I do under pressure? I thrive. Anyway, I thought today we'd talk about shipping because shipping is going to be a big issue. You're receiving orders, but if you're not shipping stuff out, that's a big problem. In most countries, it's called stealing. So let's take a look at exactly how you can get your shipping station set up and make the shipping process as easy and efficient as possible. Let's take a look. Now to keep this video from getting too bogged down in small details, I'm going to assume that you've already got a PayPal account set up. So here I've got my PayPal which is linked to Big Cartel and again most of you know how to do this and if not and you're starting a store, I would recommend going to Big Cartel. It's very simple to use and within just a few minutes you can get this all up and running and everything connected. It works very seamlessly and it's easy to print out receipts. One day I'll get a fancy website and actually have someone build it, but for now, this works well for me and I think it would be the same for you. Here we see some different orders. We're going to use this order here that was received from Matthew, who is actually a member of Empties, and we're going to click on it and go ahead and process the order. So if you click on the details under the details column, there's a link, it'll go to the individual order page. Now PayPal recently updated this page and the way it works, so it's a little bit uh, easier to use, but right here you have your shipping address. So what I just do is I select and control C that and then I go down here and say print packing slip. And this is just a nice way to have a receipt all set up. There's other fancy ways to do this, but again this is the easiest, simplest, and cleanest way to get this done. So I print that out and I'll show you what I do with the printer receipt in a second. But that address that I've copied I now go over to Indicia, I always say that wrong, Indicia, and I'm going to open this up. And this is a, um, a shipping software item application that you can get um, online. If you go to indicia.com, you can download this, and it costs, I think, $15 a month, but the first month is free. So you can try it out and see if you like it. You just copy and paste. Uh, here's the address now, and I can validate this so I make sure I'm not sending it to a, a fake address. And now it asks me to enter the weight and all this other information. Now, for now, I'm not going to do that because I want to see exactly how much this thing weighs. All right, and here it is. Simple, print it out, one sheet of paper, it's all the information you need. Now, I would recommend if you're in the, pro um, in the market for a printer, uh, just wait a little while because once Black Friday rolls around after Thanksgiving, the prices on just about everything is going to go really low, online as well as in-store. So if you can hold out till then, wait for them to buy a printer. This one was $100, but it just went down to like 60 So the prices are always lowering. And this is a nice laser printer, and it works fine for this kind of thing. All right, so now that I've got the printed out receipt, I'm going to use this as a guide for knowing what to put in the order. Now, when you're just getting one and two orders at a time, it's really not that important to worry about losing track. But when you're getting more, dozens of orders per day, you want to make sure you have a really good paper system so you don't lose orders or forget to ship things out and that kind of thing. It can cause you a lot of problems and have customer service issues as well. So I'm going to use this to get this order. And this is a real simple one. It's just a single t-shirt, the most fantastic things, the green one, and it's a guys to excel. Now in the previous video that I uploaded before, I showed you how I organized this. And if you notice, it's just a little bit narrower. I recently got some new shelves and made these aisles a little bit longer to accommodate more shirts. But the organization is still the same. And keeping things organized is really important. If you have bunches of stuff just hanging out, which I've had before, it creates a lot of stress. It makes things messy. You misplace things. will oversell. So find a good way that works for you and stick to it. Eureka! So now that I've got the shirt, I'm going to pack up the order. Now, I've printed a couple different size flat mailers. One is a 6x9, and I think the other is like 13 by 15 or maybe 11 by 13 or something like that. Now, this one can only handle girls small through extra large and guys small and belts and things like that. But this is more standard. It goes for most other shirt sizes or if they order two shirts. Anything more than that, and I use a box to ship things out. So for this one, I'm just going to use this mailer. Before I put the shirt in there, I always put some goodies in and a lollipop pins, business cards, sticker, just some random things. Again, they're promotional items, and they cost a little bit of money, but people enjoy getting things that they didn't expect, and it's always to give more than people expect. Next, the 
shirt goes in. That's another reason it's nice to have them folded. And finally, the receipt. Now once this order is all packaged and ready to go, I use this scale, and I'll show you the brand in a minute, to get an ounce reading on it. And in this case, it says it's 12 ounces. I'm going to round it to 13 just in case. I don't want it to get returned to me by the post office. And now we're ready to print the label. Alright, so now I've got the weight of my package. I know it's 13 ounces, and I've already got the address in here. So all I'm going to do is select from the weight option. Well, the nearest one they have is 16 ounces. 12 is the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and stay safe. I'm going to go with 16 ounces. There'll be a little bit more, but in the end, I'll have the reassurance that it won't get returned to me. So now that I've got in there, I just simply go to prepare a label for printing. Now for international labels, it's a little bit trickier because they ask for a customs form, but I'm going to use the post office's custom form and not the one that Indicia, or Indicia offers. Now what I've actually done is I've gone into text edit. You can do this in Word or whatever document, for, you know, word processor you've got. And I've actually made a perfectly laid out document that fits the customs form, so I don't have to write it out. I can just print it. So what I've done here is I've got the address of my recipient. Here's Matt's address and now I'm just going to simply print this out. Alright, so now I've got my order, I've got my label underneath here, I've got my customs form and everything is ready to go. I just need to sign this. So now what I do is I simply package this up like so, take my label I printed, attach it like this, to my customs form like this. Now, it's usually a good idea to make sure that this flap here, if you've got a flap, is secure. So I put my shipping label directly over it so I don't have to waste tape. And once this is ready to go, all you need to do is sign it. Now, something to keep in mind about international orders, it seems that from post office to post office, the policy or how strict they are is a little bit different. So ask them or, or just do a trial package and see what happens. For most post offices, you actually need to take in an international order with the customs form and have it uh, authorized by someone there, and they put it in their system with the barcode and all that. But in some post offices, you can actually just drop it in the chute and make sure it's signed and dated and all the information is filled out, and they'll go ahead and process it without you being there. Anyway, that's, that's a basic overview of how to ship things. Hope that's helped. Anyway, we'll see what happens next time, and keep sending those questions and that great feedback, and I'll try to do more of these videos. Thanks. This video has been entirely too serious up to this point. So I thought we could unwind with a little music, which has been scientifically proven to help you remember things better, like the complex uh, precepts in the video you just watched. So um, <clears throat> let's unwind, shall we? Let's unwind. Selling t-shirts can be lots of fun So just make sure you're not acting dumb If you're getting paid but not shipping stuff out Your customers are gonna whine and pow They could even complain to PayPal And then your account gets shut down So take my advice and play it smart Unless you don't mind designing for Walmart